Uh, first of all, thank you for all, for all of us. We are here face to face and uh, for our participants online. And thank you, uh, Professor Koiki. And now let me start on time by opening remarks by President uh, Al Talha Blood University, Professor Dr. Ahmed Fakhri uh, Al Your Excellency, Mr. Shumansky, Ambassador of Japan. Your Excellency, Dr. Hazem al Nasser, Esteemed Guest Lecturer, Professor Koiko, uh, Toshio, Director, International Center for Water Hazard and Risk Management under, uh, under the species of UNESCO. And dear member of audience who are watching us online through different social media in Jordan and Japan. Firstly, I would like to begin by expressing my sincere gratitude to Mr. Shomaski for his kindness in personally attending this lecture at Palka Applied University, as well as arranging to have our distinguished lecturer, Professor Dr. Koiko, for his seminar on climate change and its impact on water problem in Jordan. Your Excellency, thank you for choosing this topic which is very important to us in Jordan. It's our great honor at BAU to share with our audience a valuable theme that can be summarized in two words, climate and water. Equally important is discussing its a huge impact in the whole world, especially in the light of recent natural disaster that has been increasing in incidence. The interplay between climate change and water are crucial to our response to climate change, which are undeniable phenomena hitting our world. Its aftermath extends beyond our expectation and will live for generations to come if we do not act soon. No one can imagine what is going to happen in the next decades if we refuse to act urgently and efficiently. Climate change and its widespread impacts, which are the theme of today's lecture, will keep in deteriorating and impacting our life and environment. If we do not collaborate to urgently address this issue. Consequently, I invite everybody joining us today in formulating a strong and urgent call for collaboration and cooperation between our nations to hopefully be able to help the next generation avoid the projected disruptive consequence of climate change. Dr. Koiko in today's seminar will demonstrate a great example of how we, the academic institution, will collaborate to share our experiences and explore further collaboration among us, and especially in Jordan, where water is a precious resource. Jordan, as you all know and aware of, is considered one of the top five countries in the world in terms of water scarcity. In fact, during the last year, water resources in Jordan have marked the lowest point ever throughout modern history, where water demand has crossed its red line due to the drawback of rainfall. In very simple words, there was no rain last year, a clear and undeniable consequence of reality of a climate change. I join my audience in expressing excitement of hearing from Professor Koiko and seeing what kind of experience Japan and others have in the context of climate change. Additionally, the talk will better inform us what, how they work in adapting and preparing for climate change impact, what kind of measures have been taken at local, regional, and international level in facing the impact and hazard 
of a climate change. Finally, and particularly relevant to our geographic context, we will better understand the water crisis prospect in our regional and how it will look to be in the future. Without any further delay, please allow me to give the floor for our esteemed guest. Let me thank you all for your attendance and thanks to the Embassy of Japan for facilitating such fruitful joint lecture between Jordan and Japan. Thank you all. Thank you, Professor Koiko, for your time and contribution. Mr. Water and Navigation, Professor Dr. Ahmed Ajuruni, President of Baraka Private University, Dr. of Engineer Koike Toshio, Director of International Center for Water Hazard and Risk Management, distinguished guests and dear listeners. It is our great pleasure to hold this online seminar on climate change and its implication on water issues in cooperation with Barca Pride University. I'd like to express my sincere appreciation to President Arjuni and Dr. Mahmoud Matok for their efforts to realize this opportunity. I'm excited to hold the seminar on the crucial issues of the world as well as Jordan, uh, climate change and water in the leading university in the field. Climate change is one of the biggest challenges we all are facing today. Of course, Japan is no exception. In November last year, Prime Minister Kishida attended the COP26 World Leaders Summit at Glasgow, during which he stated his own determination that Japan will be working in full force to take on climate change, a common challenge of humankind. Japan also understands the importance and gravity of the water crisis in Jordan, and places it among its priorities of our ODA policy for Jordan. Last year saw the signing of a grant agreement worth 23 million US dollars as part of our ongoing support for the Zai water supply system. We will continue focusing on water issues in supporting Jordan. Today, we are going to listen to a presentation on the nexus of the two important issues by one of the leading Japanese class, so namely Dr. Tokoike in the field, followed by a response speech by one of the most prominent Jordanian figure in the field. I hope this seminar attracts attention of many Jordanian students and scholars and makes them consider future efforts. Moreover, it would be worth mentioning here that every year the Embassy of Japan selects four to five Jordanians as governmental scholarship students. The selected students will be given full scholarship to get degrees in Japanese universities with excellent professors and curricula. The application for the next batch will open from next spring. So if you get interested in the advanced research research in Japan, as being represented today by the works of Dr. Koike, I'd like to recommend you to check it out to realize your potential in Japan. Finally, let me reaffirm our enthusiasm to strengthen cooperation with Jordan in many fields, especially in science, academia, and culture. We will continue making opportunities for Jordanians to know Japan in its diverse aspects and strengthening people-to-people -people ties between our two countries. Thank you very much for your kind attention.
He is an executive director of the International Center for Water Hazards and Risk Management under the auspices of UNESCO and Professor Emerit of the University of Tokyo in his capacity as chair of River Council of Japan since 2015 and a council member of the Science Council of Japan, cabinet office since 2017. He has also had and improved the development various aspects of infrastructure, design, and science native work by a provision of policy recommendation to the government and the public. Some of the prominent awards he has won recently include award for contribution to the EPCC Nobel Peace Prize from WMO and UNEP in 2008. Einstein Lecture Award in 2009 and from Chinese Academy of Science and Individual Excellence Award from the Group of Air Observation EOO in 2020. We now all welcome our guest speaker, distinguished guest speaker. The floor is for you, Dr. Oike, and please start. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Dr. Mohamed. Matuk, His Excellency uh, Dr. Hazem al Nasser, former Minister of Irrigation, uh, Professor Ahmad al Ajrohi, the President of Barca Applied University, and Ambassador uh, Kaoru Shimazaki, uh, the Embassy, Japan Embassy in Jordan, and a distinguished guest, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to have the, this opportunity uh, the, uh, with regard to the, uh, the uh, current change and uh, uh, its impact on water problem, especially in your region. So I would uh, try to discuss two topics, two questions. One is, as the climate system changes, as agricultural and ecological drought increase, this is the first question. Second question is, as one of the climate change adaptation measures, the, can we monitor and predict agricultural drought? So we would uh, discuss the, uh, these two questions uh, in my talk. Firstly, uh, to consider the first question, we would discuss about the climate system. If the most all energy of the phenomena uh, of the Earth uh, come from the sun, and uh, sun energy absorbed by Earth system and uh, uh, heat up the, the our mass. According to the, the temperature of the Earth, a long way a infrared emission uh, the, uh, occurs. So, but uh, actually, more the atmospheric surface distribution. Uh, I would focus on uh, uh, the three components in this sphere. So, almost half of the energy by Earth is emitted. Three types of the process. One is the radiation. The radiation, yes. And uh, the other one is uh, the sensible heat transfer. So uh, our surface is uh, become warmer, and then a wind blows, and uh, that uh, in, uh, heat is uh, passed to the atmosphere. So then we have a warm enough. And you experience very well, so by sprinkling the water uh, on the surface, the surface become, surface temperature become cool. Then the uh, liquid water is evaporated and then a latent heat is absorbed. So in this way, we have uh, warm air and uh, wet air. 
I, I have uh, two questions <laughs> to you, but uh, this is not a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, discussion. That why be a little difficult to manage. Uh, cool air mass and warm air mass. Which is heavier? Maybe you know well. Cool air air mass is heavier. Yes. So next question: Wet air mass and dry air mass. Which is heavier? In uh, in a, in a class case, <laughs> I asked the uh, the student to read that, <laughs> but the uh, more than ninety five percent student uh, make a mistake. They thought they think wet air mass is heavier, dry air mass is lighter, but actually opposite. So regardless of the kind of the gases, same number of molecule is included in that. Uh, certain volume of gas and a certain detergent pressure. Same number, regardless of the kind of the gases. So that's why a dry mass consists of the nitrogen and oxygen. The weight is 28.8. But water is at 82O. The weight is 18. You know, same number in a certain volume. So this will be a perfectly dry air, only oxygen and then nitrogen. This is a little bit wet air. This is very wet air. So the same number of molecules should be included in the certain volume under the certain temperature and pressure. So dry air is heavier, wet air is lighter. So that's why warm air mass is lighter and go up, lifted up, and warm the atmosphere. Then wet air mass is also lighter and go up, and upper temperature is uh, cooler, then uh, water vapor is saturated and condensed into the uh, water droplet, that is a cloud. So uh, at that time, the, this molten heat is released and the warm up the atmosphere. So more than half of the energy is transported by water vapor to the atmosphere. And after the, the, the emitting of the small cloud of droplet and become a large water droplet, that is a rain drop. And uh, due to the gravity, it goes down. So, Due to the, the, uh, this uh, vertical uh, transport of the water, uh, so the more than half of the absorbed energy by the earth is used for heating up the atmosphere in this uh, cloud. The, the first thing, uh, satellite image. So, ocean is darker and land is brighter. Brighter means reflection is larger on the land. Darker means absorption is larger. So that's why ocean is absorbed more energy. And ocean is water. So enough water. So that's why it, by just atmosphere over land because uh, the water is limited on the land and smaller energy is absorbed. But such a dif uh, quite the, uh, different uh, the uh, temperature gradient, uh, such a large temperature gradient cannot be observed. Why? Over ocean, rainfall is larger than and uh, therefore is smaller than the evaporation. And on the other hand, on the land, rainfall is smaller than uh, rainfall is larger than the evaporation. So ocean evaporation is larger, rainfall is smaller, that's why the ocean surface will be uh, go down. And uh, on the other hand, uh, over land, the uh, rainfall is larger 
than the population. That's great. It should be inundated. But due to the gravity, the, 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 uh, the water is go down according to the slope and go or uh, enter into the ocean and compensate the, uh, this gap. This is the land process, alpha process phenomenon. In the atmosphere, atmosphere, the rainfall is smaller and the evaporation is larger. So atmosphere over uh, uh, wet and wet and wet. And but due to the transport of the atmosphere, this wet air must uh, be transported over land and uh, only the vertical process, the, uh, this, is, this should be cooler. So that light condensed and then cloud formation and they will happen. So in this way, the, uh, uh, the water cycle plays a key role uh, to form the, our climate system. That way, climate change, the water cycle should be changed. You can understand. Our Earth is a sphere, so that's why a high latitude area has absorbed the smaller sun energy, and the low latitude area uh, absorbed the large, larger sun energy. So this uh, uh, the very large the, the discrepancy the, of the absorbed sun energy in a lower latitude and a higher latitude, you can understand. The, this red line is the distribution of the uh, longitudinal uh, distribution of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the infrared uh, radiation, uh, going radiation. Of course, the uh, higher latitude, the earth surface temperature is lower, that's why the, uh, this uh, uh, wave radiation is smaller than the uh, long wave radiation around the equator, of course, but uh, uh, the gradient is uh, quite different. So that's why uh, the, in a uh, lower uh, latitude, uh, the energy is uh, surplus, and a uh, higher latitude deficit. To compensate this uh, gap, uh, atmospheric circulation and the ocean circulation is generated. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, suppressed energy is transport, transported to the higher latitude by the ocean circulation, ocean current, and also the atmospheric circulation. This is the general circulation of the Earth. According to that process, uh, the your country uh, is, is a very critical. So uh, this uh, atmospheric uh, circulation from the uh, equator to the whole uh, uh, side uh, are divided into three uh, parts. This uh, last part is called uh, the hardware circulation, and uh, along uh, the uh, equator, it's uh, upward wind, and then uh, around your region, it's a substance. So uh, that's why we are uh, every day very fine weather and the uh, uh, convection uh, cloud uh, the, cannot be developed well in this uh, region. So that's why the rainfall prediction along the, the uh, uh, latitude, uh, we have a large amount of the rainfall uh, along the great this is the uh, intertropical convergence zone. And in your region, subtropical region, uh, according to the high, high pressure, the uh, subsidence, that's why it's uh, due to the subtropical uh, high, uh, therefore, is uh, uh, less than the other region. So this is the climate system. But, uh, so uh, the climate system, is it changed? That is a question of the, of the uh, IPCC. Is the climate changing? So, I, the inter, uh, 
panel on the car are uh, working. Uh, most of the so I uh, uh, during the the, uh, the force assessment to report uh, the in two thousand seven uh, the, uh, the this force report part seven. This is consist of the three. I worked at uh, of the working group one physical science based. And uh, in the first report in 2007, working group one, they uh, concluded at first, warming of the climate system is unequivocal. Uh, this uh, unequivocal, this one is a little difficult to Japanese. It's very difficult to uh, translate. Uh, of course, they translate uh, this unequivocal to Japanese. But uh, the, this is the uh, 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 working group one message. Warming of the climate system is it's nearly a given. Average temperature, sea, uh, uh, and the shrinking of the sun. And next question. Change the climate. And uh, so the uh, uh, the model simulation, so called general fluctuation model. I mentioned general fluctuation, so large scale, global scale fluctuation, uh, the, by using the, the ocean and the atmosphere coupled uh, the circulation modeling. Uh, the, uh, in this uh, simulation, uh, 90 uh, global simulation center joining. And we conclude the, this uh, warming is very likely due to the observed increase in atmospheric uh, anthropogenic the, uh, greenhouse gas concentration. So, anthropogenic greenhouse gas concentration increase, that means that by human beings, very likely mean more than 90 percentage of the model support this result. So this is uh, the, the, our conclusion of the assessment report the force in 2007. And the IPCC uh, uh, was uh, celebrated by the, uh, the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, the, as uh, Professor Mutul could introduce the, uh, as one of the contributors to the IPCC, it, and I, I was also the, uh, separated by uh, the IPCC. And the next assessment report was uh, uh, published in, in 2013. Uh, it was used of the climate book by the uh, the uh, uh, the ocean heat content and also the uh, the uh, here uh, Arctic summer sea ice uh, extension extent. So in in this case, very similar simulation uh, were done, and the conclusion is the same, but the expression is a difficult different. It is extremely likely, not a very likely extremely likely is defined as more than 95 percentage of the model suffered uh, this result. So this is the, the, uh, uh, our scientific uh, uh, the output in 2013. And the last August, August last year, assessment report 6 was published by the working group 1. In this uh, report, is the climate changing? The climate. What? And the very clear, unequivocal vocal that has had more the up and land. This is the, the conclusion and that the rapid change the ocean cryosphere and biosphere occur as the change. And uh, the, the reason 
was also uh, the uh, clarified. Example warming is drip on human activity. With greenhouse gas warming, this is, you know this one, so this net part is the greenhouse gas uh, uh, contribution, but partly masked by also human uh, effect, that is, they also uh, could uh, be, be our activity with uh, the uh, not only the greenhouse gases, but uh, the soup, the small particle. So that, that uh, is uh, uh, work as a uh, yeah, uh, kind of the mask. So the, the cooling part also uh, clearly uh, quantified uh, that, that contribution. And, uh, and then the, uh, this positive and negative effect and then uh, this global warming, uh, the OCA. That is the conclusion of the IPCC assessment report six. So, climate system is changing. So in that case, we are as the agricultural and the ecological drought increase. At this moment, yeah, the actually, the, we start to the, this question, uh, the, there are a lot of the uncertainty compared uh, to the flood uh, uh, extreme uh, the event, the flood. The flood is clearly played the, by the model, also the, uh, the uh, theoretical terms, but uh, uh, this drought uh, increase or not increase, uh, this is a very long term the, the question. Uh, what is agriculture and uh, ecological drought? You know, the natural climate barrier, due to the natural climate variability, precipitation deficiency and temperature, high temperature. This is the meteorological drought. And then the uh, water deficiency and the reduced stream flow, the inflow to the river and the groundwater deficiency. This is a hydrological drought. And then, the uh, plant water stress and the reduced biomass and the uh, yield. This is the agriculture and the ecological drought. So then the, uh, our economy and the society and environment uh, get a very big damage. So this uh, the agricultural ecological drought increase or not? So the IPCC assessment report six in the last August clearly said. So this is the uh, observed changes in agriculture and ecological drought, and the confidence in human contribution to observed changes in the world region. And your region, uh, Mediterranean area, uh, the, this is increased, and the two dot mean the confidence in the human contribution is medium. Okay, so the, uh, there are no high uh, region, so the West North America and uh, the Euro region is a uh, two dot. So very clear uh, the uh, high confidence on uh, this chain. And uh, the this is uh, uh, the the uh, 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 observed change and uh, prediction uh, compared to the. Uh, uh, 1850 to 1900, uh, the, uh, the according to the, the increase of the, uh, the global temperature, uh, what kind of the, uh, the changes uh, can be projected? Uh, the, this is the, uh, the uh, report from the, this is the result of the air assessment report uh, six. But the very uh, chart we got assessment level four and fifth. So the, 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 this uh, dark green area increase of the uh, annual rainfall. And uh, this uh, uh, the, the, uh, brown color area, uh, the decrease. So the uh, region here, the 10 percentage the decrease by and 1.5 uh, the every increase, and uh, around the 20 percent decrease of the rainfall uh, according to the two degree global warming, and uh, the uh, due to the 
accordingly uh, increase the very large the decrease of, of the rainfall. And the uh, responding to the, this rainfall change, uh, annual mean total current soil moisture change by using standard deviation. Absolute value, the drier region is very small uh, of the uh, changes there of the absolute value. So that's why we usually use the standard deviation. So minus one is uh, the correspond to the once six year uh, the uh, drought uh, case. So uh, the uh, you can identify the uh, the uh, projected the result uh, the in a region. Yeah. So this Mediterranean area uh, is uh, uh, affected the uh, climate change increase uh, with uh, uh, and uh, more evaporation. So the, then the total of uh, uh, calm soil moisture uh, the changes they uh, become more severe. But then that is uh, the uh, uh, hydrological situation. Why the in a region, the, uh, the uh, uh, receive the, this kind of the, uh, the uh, impact due to the climate change. Uh, the one of the, the theoretical background was uh, developed uh, in 1960s. So sun energy is heated at the surface, and according to the temperature increase the uh, Infrared radiation, uh, upward uh, infrared radiation is emitted. Infrared radiation absorbed by greenhouse gases, and then the temperature of the atmosphere uh, is rising. So that is a, a green, you know, very well. But not only the distresses, but the following process is very important. Uh, at increase, that means downward long wave radiation also increase. Can you understand that? This is uh, the uh, orange become red. <laughs> Some more, that means, and also the wet area mass is generated more frequently. So then, the day and light, so going up. So uh, in this way, the, the according to the, the uh, greenhouse gas effect, convection also the uh, accelerated. And uh, in a natural area, uh, the uh, warm air mass and the it, uh, the uh, that why the heavy. If the rainfall happens in a narrow area and a wider area, it subsides. So then it's a bit drier. You know, the, I, I mentioned that physics was developed in the 1960s. You know who developed this theory? Maybe you know all. Doctor, uh, the of the, this, uh, the uh, equivalent, uh, the, uh, oh, sorry, what happened? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, uh, and then the, he introduced the salary to the computer. And then uh, I'm very happy to know uh, the professor uh, Manade uh, got a uh, prize in the physics uh, last year. The, I, I'm a, a civil engineer, not a uh, uh, geophysics scientist, but uh, the reason why I uh, I'm working with uh, climate system and water cycle uh, uh, is uh, the, his the supervision. The, uh, I met him in 1993, and then after that, since the, uh, that, uh, my first meeting, uh, uh, he supported me, and 
And I'm very happy to know the, uh, the uh, Dr. Shukuro's uh, the, uh, Nobel uh, Prize. And so the, in, okay. So the, the very uh, important paper was published in 2015 by the Bill Rao and uh, uh, Dr. Kim the, of the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, uh, proceeding of the National Academy of Science, PINAS, they uh, introduced this one. The, by using the 33 climate model, uh, the, they analyzed the mechanism of the, this, this uh, uh, the, uh, dry, Dryness uh, in your uh, the, the, the This uh, doctor, that uh, yellow line, uh, is uh, come from the average uh, uh, 33 climate model for the rainfall. Rainfall increases nearby equator. And another place, uh, at a higher latitude, uh, increase. This is uh, the uh, particle person. The orange is upward, blue is the substance downward. So, as I mentioned, this is the hard rate substance. This is the equator, and then uh, this is the substance. So this is the hard rate substance. Northern hemisphere, hard rate substance in the southern hemisphere. You are country, country located here. And he analyzed, they analyzed the immortality. How much change? This is the mean uh, vertical wind. This changes. Very surprisingly, this uh, heart rate circulation core is narrowing. And uh, the uh, upward wind decreases here. But uh, the uh, this uh, downward wind air ah, widen. This is uh, uh, the changes, change, uh, this is upward, but uh, this can kind of downward. Downward become lower, but the, this is downward uh, wind. So downward wind, something the area become larger. So this is the mechanism. So that's why uh, the heavy rainfall uh, occurred around the equator and uh, the, in uh, uh, the, this wide region, uh, lower uh, atmosphere, the near surface, become dry. So this is the mechanism. So the, this happened the, uh, in our current works. So uh, the, that's why as the current system changes, the agricultural ecological drought. So in that case, uh, the, uh, as one of the climate change adaptation, uh, how can we adapt uh, these changes? Uh, as one of the climate change adaptation measure, can we monitor and predict agricultural drought? Yeah, if we can monitor the agricultural drought or predict agricultural drought, we can maybe uh, the take some countermeasure. So this is uh, one of my signs. The, of course, the, by this uh, prediction, we can also the, uh, take a very, uh, various uh, 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 adaptation measures uh, be able to introduce uh, the other uh, uh, possibility. So uh, what is the, the climate change adaptation measure? How can we? Develop this uh, uh, the measures. Basically, a uh, climate model and observe the data, and then uh, we downscaling, correct the bias, and uh, uh, uncertainty can be quantified, and the output can be used as an input into the hydrological model, and drought and flood, and uh, the uh, rainfall pattern uh, can be simulated. These output should be connected with the environment, socioeconomics, and uh, culture and history, 
and then uh, we can uh, implement holistic real impact assessment on the climate change. Based on the, this assessment, we can consider adaptation options, early warning, some uh, quantity controlled by reservoir, reservoir operation can be modified uh, by using the uh, science technology, and some uh, modification of the land use, and our complaint issue. And many other adaptation option could be considered based on uh, this holistic assessment. And then, decisions should be made and then implemented. The result of the implementation should be monitored and evaluated for reflecting the uh, next decision-making process. And decision-making should consider this scientific uncertainty. Uh, we still have a large uncertainty uh, at a regional scale or local scale. So that's why the uh, scientific and engineering and socio-economic approach should be the uh, must and uh, this kind of end-to-end -end approach and the climate change adaptation should be established in the country. So, the, for example, the quantity control. So, by using the level and uh, uh, the uh, prediction, uh, we can save the water uh, if we uh, predict the, the, uh, the uh, less rainfall or, uh, or drought. Or uh, we can the, uh, save the water for irrigation uh, based on that uh, uh, the, uh, prediction. Uh, prediction includes uncertainty. So that's why how can we uh, develop the, the, such kind of methodology? That is one of the uh, very hot topic of the, this hydrology. The, I, I have already developed such kind of a system. But today, I have introduced the, uh, the, uh, some component. Before that, the, uh, how can we assess the, uh, this climate change? Uh, in the Mediterranean area, the, as a, one of the JICA project, JICA requested me uh, to assess the uh, uh, climate change impact in uh, Tunisia. Uh, there is uh, one uh, big river, Bejel, uh, uh, in Tunisia. So, the, the, by using the climate model, and a select a climate model which can express the, the regional climate in this region. And then uh, we check the, the uh, future uh, the change. Current rainfall, annual rainfall, and future rainfall uh, come from the climate model after the bias question and downscaling. And uh, all of the selected models show the decrease of the, the uh, future, uh, the decrease of the rainfall around uh, 2050. And uh, this is the point station, but uh, this is the major the river, the, uh, the Algeria. The downstream, minus 20% is April to September, and uh, upper the, uh, close to the Sahara Desert, percentage decrease. I was much surprised that the, the theoretical uh, hardware situation appeared in this way. So, uh, so then they, I uh, the, uh, recommended the, in my report of JICA project, the, it is virtually certain the drought will become more severe. So that why, as the case of measure, the, here is uh, the uh, city Salem Dam here. Uh, 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 yeah, here. The, uh, I strongly recommend the, uh, to modify the, this dam operation considering the, uh, these changes uh, in uh, uh, the uh, under rainfall. And uh, the, so the, the Adaptation measure, uh, the, uh, we would focus on the monitoring the predict, prediction for, the, for urban one. So, the, the, yeah, uh, the, as a background, the, uh, uh, 
we have been working uh, to develop a, a solid moisture monitoring system by satellite. Uh, my algorithm is used as a standard algorithm for global, uh, uh, global uh, land surface soil moisture uh, product generation uh, by NASA and also the JAXA. And uh, the, so the, this data set is very useful for the uh, land surface soil moisture monitoring. But we need more information. Uh, this uh, data on land surface, but uh, we need a good zone soil moisture for crop the uh, uh, for crop crop growth. So that's why the, we develop the uh, dynamic vegetation model. The vegetation growth can be model. And uh, the vegetation itself, this is the water. This is the lying water, and this is the standing water. By using the uh, characteristics of the electromagnetic wave, we can uh, monitor the, 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 these vertical uh, water and uh, lying water separately. So the uh, Japan's uh, the, uh, sensor uh, they can monitor, uh, can observe the differences. And uh, uh, by using this uh, uh, the, the, uh, merge the, the uh, remote sensing and hydrological modeling, uh, the, that is the so-called data assimilation, uh, the, we can see the root zone monitor, the root zone soil moisture. So only by using a satellite, this root zone soil moisture cannot be observed. But uh, this kind of the, the uh, couple data simulation, uh, the, uh, we uh, have already developed the system. And uh, so this is very useful. Uh, the rainfall prediction is uh, include uncertainty. But uh, if we uh, estimate the root zone soil moisture correctly, uh, the, this is the initial condition of the agriculture. So that's why the, uh, if we have uh, enough uh, soil moisture in root zone, uh, we can uh, grow the crop. And uh, even the, the uh, rainfall prediction is uh, uncertain. So such kind of the system is very useful. And uh, we applied this system uh, to the, uh, the, the, the prediction of the, uh, the a two-year serious uh, uh, drought in Somalia. So the uh, normal prediction uh, have a very large uncertainty, but uh, this green line is actual uh, calm. And uh, our prediction is a blue line. So the, uh, we can uh, predict the, the two-year uh, lead time of the agricultural drought in Somalia. So the, and the, we uh, developed the system uh, the, by combining earth observation with the uh, hydrometric data and the satellite data and seasonal forecast and the global uh, output. And then the, uh, by using this real-time data management system, we can calculate the uh, current condition uh, of the uh, soil moisture and also the, the uh, crops. So, and then the, the, this uh, uh, couple that can be done, uh, we applied this system to North Africa, uh, the uh, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco. So the uh, system can monitor the, uh, the uh, uh, the leaf area index and uh, monitoring and uh, the seasonal prediction which includes uncertainty that might be at the ensemble rainfall prediction and then uh, this is the input into the vaccination system and uh, ensemble drought prediction could be 
given to you. So the uh, we'll compare the result with uh, uh, the, uh, the national meat production in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia. This is the case of the two uh, in this year, the Morocco, they experienced the very serious drought. And then uh, the uh, wheat production is very, very low. So the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 normally derived uh, from this system in Morocco. And but the Algeria, Tunisia, almost no one. So, so the, this is uh, uh, the result of the contribution to the uh, agriculture drought. Is we done the, the, this system uh, for prediction. This is a three month system. The wheat production, uh, the harvest is uh, end of March. So that's why the, uh, we started the prediction uh, January. And then uh, the, 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 uh, this is the actual uh, uh, the, uh, uh, result from the satellite. And uh, this uh, dark uh, 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 climate uh, no, uh, average. So this uh, uh, is a, a three months prediction uh, on the, the January 1st. Uh, Algeria, the Tunisia, uh, almost average, but uh, uh, is a, a very, very low production of the So the, this is the probability of the three months uh, a projection, a prediction of the agriculture. Uh, I was invited to the, the COP22 uh, and uh, the IA introduced that, uh, this result. Part Bank they request me to apply this system to uh, Northeast and uh, Northeast Brazil with year a CMS drought. And uh, uh, the, this is Canada state and uh, very serious uh, five years. So then the, uh, we applied the, uh, this uh, This is the, uh, this is the uh, targeted area, uh, 25 kilo uh, projections. So the, uh, this is uh, the this is the monitoring, and then this is the projection three months. Uh, the, and uh, this is uh, the uh, area of average the, the uh, prediction, and then uh, uh, the uh, for uh, the uh, uh, for for example the. Yeah. This grid. Uh, this is the blue one is the area average and uh, uh, pink uh, green and uh, the uh, various uh, value or can be the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, yeah. Uh, so this is the, uh, the uh, currently operating uh, system. Country. <laughs> so, the uh, Mr. Fukura-san, uh, the uh, Japan's member, requested me to uh, give a talk uh, three months ago. But uh, I have never been in your country uh, yet. So that's why we very imagine uh, your country. So uh, then we applied the, our satellite uh, uh, to your country due to the very limited resources the the middle of uh, middle of ten days of August uh, the uh, the simulate uh, uh, observe uh, this is the root zone for most uh, from the satellite data is available since uh, two thousand four uh, this uh, uh, Sensor was developed by uh, our, uh, Japan 
try to uh, uh, itself uh, uh, provided from the, the project. And that, uh, 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 following the, the, uh, the government developed the our satellite, and uh, this sensor uh, advanced what you do, and then the, we it can continue to monitor the uh, uh, the soil moisture. Uh, this is the uh, soil moisture uh, middle ten days in August. So the in 2013. I uh, have a, a wet year, but a 2017 very dry year. So the and uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, leaf area in the crystal crop uh, in August. There is evidence that by the some impact of the the uh, some, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, snapshot of the rainfall. Uh, uh, also the and uh, the I uh, also the focus on the some region of the, the Yotan River and uh, I checked the uh, agriculture production that that is uh, uh, most of the uh, yeah the, this is uh, more than two hundred percentage their product uh, so this is very one the very important uh, their uh, export the uh, so and then the uh, sowing season in the September, October, no. Friday uh, we focus on uh, August and uh, the uh, uh, fall to 2018 uh, we calculate some statistics as uh, the anomaly index, the some value of each year uh, by Asian standard deviation. So the and then uh, this uh, uh, vegetation water content comes from satellite uh, the express. This is come from the uh, yeah, this uh, uh, monitoring system. I come from statistics of your country the tomato production. The uh, is normalized uh, uh, this. Uh, anomaly index, the almost different than uh, this uh, 2014, but the 2013 you have a uh, uh, 17, you have uh, a less rainfall, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, the agricultural effect uh, or low effect uh, can be monitored with the uh, methodology. So, uh, my uh, uh, system changes. Does agricultural ecological drought increase? Yes. As one of the climate change adaptation measures, can we monitor and predict the agricultural drought? Yes. The, but uh, I have not the, uh, get some uh, result in, in North Africa, uh, Brazil. Uh, it, it can this is my uh, talk. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. <coughs> thank you very much, uh, Dr. Koiti. It's really very impressive and very high, high level of scientific uh, lecture. Uh, it's really, we are really in, uh, looking forward to have such kind of experience in Jordan. We are really looking for that. Uh, the most important thing that I really notes in your culture, I hear that we are in the critical situation, our region, especially Jordan. And this is, will be a very good sign for us to work more hardly in the climate change. Thank you very much. And let me ask His Excellency Dr. Hazm Nasser uh, for his remarks after this lecture. Dr. Hazm Nasser uh, was uh, ex-minister of uh, water irrigation in Jordan. And he has a very good uh, work research in climate change and water uh, scarcity in Jordan. And I think he is the most uh, well known figure in the water issue in Jordan, also one of the good scientists in this field. You have the floor for you, your experts. Can you give me the host to the point? Okay.
Are you okay? Yes, thank you. صباح الخير وكل عام وانتم بخير. يور اكسلنسي امباسادور جمعة الدهاش ماي كينجدوم اوف جوردن. يور اكسلنسي دكتور احمد العجلون بريزيدنت اوف ذا البلكا اطلاي يونيفرستي. اور ديستينجوش جاست بروفيسور كورياكي فروم جابان. ليديز اند جنتلمان جود مورنينغ. افتر وي هير the scientific and the academic background of the impact of climate change on water and agriculture by our distinguished uh, professor, Professor Kayaki. Uh, I would like to uh, highlight a uh, few issues related to water and climate change particular related to the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Uh, when it comes to climate change in our area, water at the heart of climate change. And when we talk about climate change and the variability we heard from our uh, distinguished uh, lecturer, uh, for us as uh, Jordanian, maybe the Middle East as a whole, uh, climate change means more water short, which adds to the challenges that we have already in this area. So just to give you a brief description, I will not be uh, alone, but I will try to bridge the scientific, economic, and political aspects of climate change and water. Uh, Jordan, as mentioned by the president of the university, among the most scarce countries in the world. Uh, their capita availability is less than 100 cubic meter per year for all uses, which is very low, very low by, by all means and standards. Uh, this mainly due to uh, prevailing climate conditions, population growth, Jordan uh, hosted waves of uh, refugees and displaced persons as a result of regional conflict. Uh, the impact of uh, influx of refugees on Jordan's water resources as an immediate impact is much, much higher than the impact of the climate change because increasing demand in emergency and crisis management uh, time is much and more damaging to the precious water resources that we have. So when it comes to climate change, the climate change actually pressures the already stressed water resources, which is very little. We don't have major rivers, we don't have major lakes, we have some groundwater and some transboundary water resources and the groundwater being overcome. So these challenges uh, impacted so many issues related to water. First of all, people are not getting water. This is the bottom line. Jordanians last two, three years getting water once every two weeks, uh, which is low by all means. Uh, water became expensive because development of scarce water resources is a very expensive business. And over the last 50 years, Jordan developed all accessible, easy accessible water resources. And now we have to look for remote ones which are beyond our uh, financial uh, capabilities and beyond affordability of people to pay for such a very expensive water. A Jordanian pays an average like $2 per cubic meter of water, uh, which is very high along among all standards and tariffs in the region, where cost is about four US dollar. Cost is four US dollar per cubic meter, and Jordanians pay two dollars. Two dollars is very, very expensive for the people. If you consider the income uh, of people and how much they pay for water and sanitation, this represents maybe uh, five to seven percent of their income, which 
which is high, high by all standards. Most of the people pay between uh, 0.5 to 1, I mean worldwide, between 0.5 to 1 percent of their income. So those are some of the challenges. When it comes to climate change, we did some very important studies. And I was a contributor to this research personally. Uh, between 2013 and 2016 with uh, Stanford University. And simply we found that rainfall amounts, especially in the southern east and southern west part of Cuba, will decrease by the uh, end of century uh, between 15 to 25 percent. This is, this is huge. This is very scary because already the groundwater recharge rate at the edge. If we lose that amount of rainfall, this means we will not have groundwater recharge, which is a main water supply for Jordania, especially for the drinking water. So this is about the uh, financing. Of course, one of the additional challenges Side, financing and cost and remoteness of the uh, supply and accumulation of growth and the increasing demand is how to channel the new technologies to help alleviate water shortages in Jordan. Uh, in particular, moving from uh, water to digital water business. And this needs a lot of financing. And this needs new infrastructure. Also, it needs a new culture and a new capacity building, which we are really uh, lacking. Maybe the, uh, your university can help with that, because this is a very important aspect to all of us. Uh, when it comes to agriculture, as mentioned by uh, our professor, uh, the climate change impact on rainfield agriculture in Jordan will be huge because models and simulation predictions said that, again, by the end of the century, um, rainfield agriculture will lose about 18% of its rainfall amount or water supply, which means we have to come up with additional water supply to mitigate this process. Uh, I don't think we will be able to do, but the end result will be impact of the sustainability of irrigated, uh, sorry, of feed agriculture, rampant agriculture in Jordan, especially along the uh, uh, mountain area. So those are the challenges in, in the brief, and there are many, many additional, additional technical ones related to efficiency of water use, uh, integrated water resources management, etc. But how the how Jordan responded to these challenges over the years. Uh, Jordan worked in so many fronts because uh, definitely there is no magic solution to solve this chronic water problem. Otherwise, we have done it many, many years. And I think Jordanians will continue to live with this uh, challenge for many generations to come. So the, the uh, Jordanian government over the, the years worked over so many fronts, as I said, to alleviate the water shortage, starting with demand management, uh, educating people, uh, introducing water conservation uh, measures and technologies, especially in the, in the Jordan, uh, in the agricultural uh, sector, irrigated agriculture, and always I give example just to demonstrate how Jordanian farmers are really efficient in water use. The, I said the amount of water that we used to use uh, since uh, 2006 or 5 did not increase when it comes to agriculture. On the contrary, it increased by about 20%. And today, our agricultural produce increased two to three times with the, this amount of water that we used to use 20 years ago. This is uh, uh, evidence about how Jordanians, Jordanian farmers 
work in efficiency over the years, especially in, in the Jordan Valley. So this is part of the response is, is the uh, demand management, water conservation, and uh, uh, increasing uh, water supply. Uh, increasing water supply, with, with the exception of the DC project, we could not increase major water supply quantities over the years for the reasons I said it's so expensive. Uh, if we want even desalination, this is not an option for Jordan because the closest sea is about 400 kilometers away from the demand center. And to convey and desalinate and distribute, we need billions of dollars. And uh, with the uh, influx of refugees, and their impact on the economy, uh, Jordan is really not being able to do this from the physical budget. And uh, we tried with the international community over the years, but um, until now, uh, actually there is no success in, in, in doing that. Uh, we focused as a response to the water challenge on circular economy, in particular uh, wastewater renewal. And Jordan is one is one of the Middle Eastern countries where we reuse 100% uh, of our wastewater. And this is a big achievement for a country with modest uh, infrastructure and modest uh, uh, financial return. And we work a lot on integrated water resources management. How we integrate all the resources under one water cycle. Uh, but unfortunately, due to external elements, and uh, mainly uh, conflicts in the region, as well as influx of refugees, and now the challenge of climate change, long-term planning for water for the water sector is not possible. Because when we start to uh, uh, do proper planning, uh, we surprised by an influx of refugees like the one happened in 2012-2013 where 1.5 million Syrian refugees came to Jordan almost overnight and those represent about uh, uh, 20 to 25 percent of the total population. So nobody in the world can tell Jordanians about long-term planning when it comes to the water sector unless, unless we have access to the funds of the world, which is not the case. And that's why long-term planning, people a lot, every day they say, water planning, where is this? This could not happen because of the external elements. Iraqi war, Syrian civil war, influx of refugees, climate change. Those external elements beyond our economical, social capabilities, <coughs> as well as technical, infrastructural wise. One of the solutions that we worked a lot on it, and uh, our friends in Japan also very much pro such a uh, major, which is utilization of renewable energy in the water sector, in particular solar energy. And I can tell you the only water sector in the Middle East with 20% of the energy mix is from solar energy is the Jordan's water which is a big achievement in terms of uh, uh, mitigation for climate change, although we did not contribute to any uh, of the impacts of the climate change. Jordan is not an industrial country, uh, but we receive the impact, the negative impact of climate change. So uh, uh, renewable energy uh, maybe is one of the uh, hope and light at the end of the tunnel for maybe a cheaper water production over the coming five years. So I try to be short, uh, brief, uh, straightforward, um, and this is the message that I, I, I would like to uh, tell you about uh, Jordan's water sector. And um, if you allow me, uh, can we ask, can I ask Dr. Koyaki just one question? And, uh, if he is hearing me. Yeah, he is I want to ask him 
because we listened to a very fantastic lecture, uh, very scientific. But I want to ask him to tell us in one statement, a uh, quantitative statement, about the impact of climate change on Jordan. Is this negative, positive, and how much? This is the statement I think we, the, the audience, we would like to hear from Professor Kawayaki if, if this is possible. I thank you very much, and I thank the uh, Albalta University, Your Excellency, President Kajroni, for inviting me to contribute to this important seminar. I also want to take and seize the opportunity to thank our Japanese friends and uh, Japanese people for supporting Jordan over the years, in particular the water sector. And Japanese uh, uh, financial and technical support to the water sector really made a change over the years. And for that, Your Excellency, we thank you very, very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. The, uh, uh, the purpose, as I mentioned earlier, uh, not only one discipline, but uh, the uh, cooperative, the discipline, disciplinary cooperation, interdisciplinary cooperation, and also the, that value should be shared with society. So transdisciplinary, the cooperative framework should be developed. But that's why. The, uh, I cannot say that this is a quantitative the solution of the climate change. But as you, you uh, the mentioned the, the, uh, from the point of the, the uh, energy, uh, or from the point of the, the uh, water saving uh, for agriculture, uh, the, we need to evaluate the, each the adaptation methodology based on the assessment. Then we can uh, trying to find the solution. That, that is my idea. So my, my uh, response to uh, the question is that the, uh, we need to work together, the interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary, to get the, that question, and uh, to get the answer to the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. And thank you, Excellency. Now we are uh, coming to the, our closing uh, time for our workshop. At the title, we are requesting His Excellency, Dr. President uh, Dr. Ahmed Ajoni, to give his uh, closing remark and quick uh, text. an expert uh, in this field to give the closing remark, so I will try. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you, Professor Kweko, for your fruitful uh, lecture. Uh, thanks a lot. And thank you, Dr. Hazm Nasser, for your comments. And uh, thank you, Mr. Ambassador, uh, for choosing this topic. It's really very important topic in Jordan, because uh, wherever you go in Jordan, uh, always we talk about water. You go, everybody in his house, they talk about water. Is, is there is a water today or not? Is that right? That's what we do in all our life. So thank you a lot. And I think we need to gather and we need to get uh, Japanese experts uh, uh, to do like a prediction center, probably scientists in Balka, Applied University, and Japan or JICA probably, we need to bring experts to have to do some kind of center for prediction in global warming. And I guess even war probably contribute to global warming. So I think we need to do more of scientific research and what's the effect of global warming in Jordan even. So uh, in the end, I thank all the audience here and I thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I thank Dr. Hazm Nasser. I thank everybody. And I hope we will see you again soon in the next lecture. So thanks a lot, everybody. And see you very soon, hopefully.
Thank you. Thank you for uh, this important uh, workshop about climate change. My question is for Professor Toshio Kiyoko. Uh, he spoke in his presentation about uh, the uncertainty in predicting climate change. Uh, you might know, and you all know, about uh, the Kyoto Protocol. Now there's two contributors for the climate change. One of them. Professor Toshio Kiyok is still with us. Uh, yeah, I am here. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, you uh, you want to ask uh, two questions? Yeah, I, I just have uh, one, one key question about uh, the uncertainty in predicting the climate change. Uh, there is two reasons, uh, I believe, that contribute to climate change. One is uh, human activities related, and the other one is beyond our control, which is the obliquity of uh, the Earth axis uh, tilting. For example, in the last uh, 41,000 years, the tilting angle changed between 22 degrees to 24.5 degrees. Uh, in terms of uh, human activities, uh, the humanity has added the problem, uh, and we were aware of it since Kyoto Protocols in 1997, and we ended up with London Declaration in 2021. Uh, but I believe most of the research are focusing on human activities and a very little research at least maybe the major contributor, which is the effectivity in uh, predicting uh, the climate change and drought regions. So what do you think of that? And my second question, shall we in Jordan, uh, from your viewpoint, accelerate the adaptation of new technological development in the water sector uh, in order to help ourselves in solving the problem. Not limited to desalination, as His uh, Excellency mentioned, but maybe in water reuse. Uh, what do you recommend on that? And thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much. The uh, very important two questions there. With regard to the first one, the, yeah, uh, the your country, Jordan, and uh, uh, as a dry country, you have a lot of other experiences. I have heard uh, 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 in your language uh, there are 15 or 16 level of uh, uh, the dryness. Uh, the, uh, I'm not sure that the, uh, such kind of uh, the culture and also the, uh, the uh, uh, life experiences the you have. So based on that, the, the uh, your culture and the social mechanism, the, how can you uh, adapt uh, to the, this the unexperienced change? So the uh, as we uh, see the the uh, identified this change is unequivocal and this. The, uh, the caused by human being by the uh, increase of the greenhouse uh, gas the, the, uh, uh, the uh, emission. So the uh, for example, the Dr. Naber they uh, analyzed the, the paleo climate uh, situation compared with the current the change of the climate. The very clear uh, the change they can be identified. So I think the so the based on the, the uh, cultural uh, social mechanism uh, we accumulate the past we need to adapt. So for that purpose, the, this is a, the closely related to the second question. Uh, we need to understand we uh, we need to understand 
the mechanism and also the uncertainty itself, and they uh, try to quantify. But uh, uh, the quantification is limited. So uh, that might be uh, uh, based on the, uh, our understanding mechanisms, quantification, and uncertainty. We need to make a decision. For the purpose, the, uh, based on assessment, we need to develop a list of the uh, adaptation options and uh, uh, economic and uh, all social evaluation, and then we need to take the, uh, the option the, based on the experiences. There is no uh, unique, no universal answer, but it depends on the each country, culture, the experience, and the social condition. That is my uh, the observation. This is a, uh, the combined the answer to your first question and the second question. Uh, is it okay? Hello. Yes. Go ahead. Can you can you hear me well? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Hiba Harabshe from the Faculty of Agricultural Technology. Uh, I have a question to Professor Toshio um, regarding um, uh, the, um, the kind of adaptation for climate change that is very suitable for Jordan. For uh, example, we have two kinds of adaptation. The one which is uh, um, the pro-adaptation techniques, and uh, for example, in selecting what is the best or the, uh, the good choice of crops that will uh, use little amount of water, which are, which are the uh, drought-tolerant crops, or the other kind of climate change adaptation, which is following uh, the crisis, um, uh, which is like uh, using some certain kind of techniques like water harvesting. So uh, what is the best for Jordan to choose the pro-adaptation techniques or the one that following the phenomena? Because uh, we are in the Faculty of Agriculture and Technology in the Water and Environment Resource Management Department uh, are uh, interested uh, in this uh, um, science and we are trying to develop uh, a laboratory uh, which uh, take care of the, this kind of research. So uh, this is the end of my question. Oh, okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for your very, uh, the, what I say, uh, very uh, thoughtful the, uh, idea. And of course, the selection of the crop uh, to adapt the change in uh, the water harvesting. And, uh, and then also, the, the, uh, uh, His Excellency mentioned that the, uh, some energy, renewable energy uh, mixing. Uh, they are very uh, effective, I think. See, I think the our time uh, is the maybe societal stability and also the uh, the quality, uh, keeping the quality of life to support the these uh, 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 social the objective. One of the aspect is the water, food, energy, nexus, uh, the conservation. So the water, food, energy, the, these are closely related together. So how can we develop this kind of comprehensive the methodology, not only uh, by the, the agricultural scientists, also in cooperation with uh, hydrology the scientists and also the energy uh, engineering. To, so such kind of uh, the, uh, uh, coordinated framework may be necessary to find a reasonable solution. So university uh, has a set kind of the function to develop, the, as I mentioned, the, uh, the interdisciplinary framework to solve the problem. Uh, comprehensively from the point, various point of view, and communication with uh, communication or dialogue with society is a very key. I think the uh, the role of the, the university uh, to uh, 
developed the adaptation methodology or a society which can be which can adapt to the, this change uh, is very very important in, uh, in uh, of the yeah, university law. That is my uh, response to you. Is it okay? Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Koike. And uh, this is, will be the last question because His Excellency has another commitment. He has to be on time. And uh, let me, in your behalf, thank you very much, Dr. Dr. Koike, on behalf of Al Alba Abad University and the audience. And uh, let me express our very grateful and thank you. Thank you very much for very, very high level scientific lecture. Thank you for our audience. Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. Shimazaki, Your Excellency, Dr. Hazem Nasir, Your Excellency, Dr. Ahmed, President of al balqa Abdullah University, to host such a very high-level academic workshop. Thank you very much, and let us give a very, clap, very big clap for our Thank you very much. Shukran, shukran. Thank you very much.